Hi everybody. Today we discuss tyrosine metabolism. Tyrosine metabolism. We have already discussed tyrosine metabolism, but we have discussed in relation to the synthesis of epinephrine and norepinephrine. This tyrosine is a non-essential amino acid. It is an aromatic amino acid, and it is aromatic amino acid, and it will lead to the formation of glucose. That it is glucogenic. as well as ketogenic so the crux of the cycle is that in the end we have to have two splits where it enters the tca cycle and where it forms acetoacetate so that it enters to form it enters in the glucose cycle or is glucogenic and it enters in the lipid cycle or it is ketogenic okay so finally we have to get this and this is the importance of this cycle now tyrosine as a non essential aromatic amino acid the other three aromatic amino acids that we have are the other three aromatic amino acids that we have are the three aromatic amino acids are ptt that is phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan now phenylalanine is an essential amino acid so phenylalanine will be the one which will help in the formation of tyrosine that we have already seen let's see it again so phenylalanine phenylalanine this is phenylalanine this is an essential aromatic amino acid it will form tyrosine in the presence of enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase and tetrahydro bioptidin this cycle or this pathway we have already discussed and the deficiency of this enzyme leads to phenyl ketone urea so pku will be caused if there is deficiency of phenyl alanine hydroxylase so if we are asked about tyrosine metabolism first we have to know how is tyrosine formed tyrosine is formed from phenyl alanine Through enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase, and it takes into account tetrahydrobioptin. So this is the main reaction to form tyrosine. Now coming to the overall tyrosine metabolism, the first reaction remains the same that we have already discussed. That is phenylalanine. That is the essential aromatic amino acid will form tyrosine. Okay. So now we have got tyrosine in our cycle. now this tyrosine will form para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate the cycle is important not only for the, the metabolism of its own but also for the deficiency of the enzyme because every uh, enzyme deficient or lack will cause certain kind of disease and then homogenesis or homogenesis so this is my favorite part that it call, forms homogenesis because homogenesis it is not formed anywhere else in the biochemistry so phenylalanine will form tyrosine tyrosine will form para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate and this will form homogenesis now phenylalanine forms tyrosine as we know through phenylalanine hydroxylase phenylalanine hydroxylase tyrosine will form pyruvate so pyruvate tyrosine that is one amino acid forming pyruvic acid pyruvate so it is a transaminase reaction tyrosine trans aminase and whenever we have a transaminase reaction we require an alpha keto acid that is alpha keto glutarate this will lead to the production of glutamate and over here we have tetrahydrobioptidin to form dihydrobioptidin Now pyruvate, para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate forms homogenesis in the presence of para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate dioxygenase. Dioxygenase. Now wherever we have dioxygenase, we require ascorbate. Ascorbate to form dihydro ascorbate. Ascorbate plus water plus carbon dioxide. so homogenesis homogenesis we have done and it is a very important landmark in this cycle it forms homogenesis 
Now this homogeneous will further form 4 malyl acetoacetate. 4 malyl acetoacetate and this 4 malyl acetoacetate will be formed in the presence of enzyme homogeneousate oxidase. Homogeneousate oxidase. This 4 malyl acetoacetate forms 4 fumaryl acetoacetate. Now, what happens is only the malyl part is getting converted to fumaryl part, that is, there is an isomerization reaction. So, it is isomerases. It is 4 malyl acetoacetate isomerases. Okay, so 4 malyl into 4 fumaryl. Now, as we had already discussed, we require a split in this reaction because we have to justify that it will form, it will go to glucose as well as lipid metabolism. So, this is the split. And because we are splitting it, there is an enzyme which is called as hydrolases through water molecule. Okay? Hydrolases through water molecule. Now, this fumarate can enter the TCA cycle and thus it is into the justifying that it is a glucogenic amino acid and this acetoacetate will enter the fat metabolism it is justifying that it is a ketogenic amino acid so in getting in the crux that phenylalanine will form tyrosine through phenylalanine hydroxylase tyrosine will form para hydroxy phenyl pyruvate it is a transamination reaction. So, one amino acid, one keto acid, forming one amino acid, one keto acid. So, for the parahydroxyphenyl pyruvate forms homogeneous in the presence of enzyme dioxygenase and ascorbate. This homogeneous forms 4 malyl acetoacetate in the presence of enzyme homogeneous oxidase. This forms isomerizes to fumaryl acetoacetate, which splits into fumarate and acetoacetate fumarate, forming into the TCA cycle acetoacetate going into the fat metabolism so finally this is the small cycle not a very difficult one as is considered to be but now coming to the now coming to the the this cycle is important not only in the basis of short note but also in the basis of clinical cases and also in the, on the basis of enzymes now we know that there is a there is a deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase that leads to pku phenyl ketone urea if there is a deficiency of tyrosine transaminase, it will lead to tyrosinemia type 2. Okay. Tyrosinemia type 2. If there is a deficiency of parahydroxyphenyl pyruvate dioxygenase, it will lead to neonatal tyrosinemia. Neonatal tyrosinemia. Coming to the my favorite one that is homogeneous set oxidase. If there is a deficiency of homogeneous set oxidase, it leads to alkapton urea. Alkapton urea. 4 malyl acetoacetate isomerases and 4 malyl a 4 fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolases. These two can lead to a condition which is tyrosinosis or tyrosinemia type 1 ok fine so every enzyme has a disorder phenylalanine hydroxylase deficiency lead to phenylketonuria the catch over here is that the type 2 comes first so tyrosine transaminase deficiency will cause tyrosinemia type 2 parahydroxyphenyl pyrodioxygenase will cause neonatal tyrosinemia Homogeneous oxidase deficiency will cause alkaptonuria. Formalyl acetoacetate isomerase or hydrolases, or it could be formalyl acetoacetate isomerases and hydrolases. The deficiency could cause tyrosinosis or tyrosinemia type 1. Okay, so the phenylalanine which forms tyrosine and which ultimately justifies that as glucogenic and ketogenic amino acid has involved errors of metabolism in all its steps. Now coming to one by one the metabolism deficient disease. Phenylketonuria we have already discussed. 
will discuss other defects that is first we will come to tyrosinemia type 2 tyrosinemia type 2 it is also called as richner Horn, uh, richner honnard syndrome richner honnard syndrome this could be a mcq richner honnard syndrome that is richner honnard syndrome is caused by deficiency of this caused by deficiency of tyrosine transaminases tyrosine transaminases okay now the second the third one first one was pku second one was tyrosinemia type 2 the third one is alkaptonuria this is a favorite one because it has many mcqs it is a good clinical case also alkaptonuria is caused by deficiency of homogentiset oxidase homogentiset oxidase now what happens is homogentiset oxidase form takes part in a reaction with this homogentisate and it finally leads to the formation of malyl acetoacetate 4 malyl acetoacetate so this is the enzyme where homogentisate oxidase takes part reaction now if there is no homogentisate oxidase there will be increased amount of homogentisate okay so there is now increased amount of homogentisate in this disease. Now what happens is increased amount of homogentisate leads to the formation of benzoquinone acetic. Benzoquinone acetic in the presence of enzyme polyphenol oxidase. Polyphenol oxidase. Now because there is benzoquinone acetate formed and it will then, it will not stop over here, it will polymerize and form alkepton, alkepton. This alkepton is finally responsible for the black color urinone standing. And this is called as ochronosis. Ochronosis. So the one thing is that it causes ochronosis. The, that is the black color urinone standing. The second thing is that it will lead to the deposition of black color pigments also on the vertebra. So deficiency of homogentisate oxidase that is increased homo homogentisate will form benzoquinone acetate in the presence of polyphenol oxidase this polymerizes to form alkepton and forms black color urinone standing this is alkeptonuria and this alkeptonuria now you know how the biochemistry of alkeptonuria is now how will you test it to test alkeptonuria there are two tests that is ferric chloride test FeCl3 and then there is AgNO test. Surprisingly, Benedict's test is also given positive. Now you will say that the Benedict's test is for the determination of reducing sugar. But actually, Benedict's test is not for reducing sugar, but it is for reducing substance. So it is for reducing substance. Therefore, Benedict's test will also be given positive. Now it is an autosomal recessive disease. It is an autosomal recessive disease. And as we had already told, as I had already told that the ochronosis, which we have seen black color urine on standing, but also we can see ochronotic arthritis, that is small joints of ochronotic arthritis, ochronotic arthritis, that is small joints are involved. Small joints of hand and feet are spared. Small joints of hand and feet are spared. Small joints of hand and feet are spared. They are spared. Okay. Renal stones can be seen. Prostatic calculi can be seen. 
now how do, how do you treat it how do you treat it as we had seen that ascorbic acid is very important in the previous reaction before the formation of uh, in the formation of homogeneous so vitamin c or ascorbic acid prevents oxidation of homogeneous acid so simple vitamin c will help so this is all about alkapton urea this is all about alkapton urea test is ferric chloride test or agno3 test benedict's test is given positive it is autosomal recessive urine will turn black on standing there is ochronotic arthritis where small joints are spared renal stones and prostatic calculi can be seen and vitamin c or ascorbic acid would help because it prevents the oxidation of homogeneous acid now coming to other one that is tyrosinosis or tyrosinemia type 1 Tyro tyrosinosis or tyrosinemia type 1 tyrosinosis or tyrosinemia type 1 now it will lead to uh, the this the deficiency is of two enzymes that is uh, i this four malyl acetoacetate isomerases or it could be it could be or or and it could be four fumaril acetoacetate hydrolases okay now the clinical features are it can cause liver failure rickets renal tubular dysfunction polyneuropathy diarrhea vomiting and the mcq point of view it is cabbage like odor cabbage like odor sometimes it could be arsenic or mcq cabbage like odor okay treatment treatment as we know that we have to take diet which has low in tyrosine diet which has low in tyrosine okay so this is all for tyrosine metabolism with its defects the tyrosine is a non essential amino acid aromatic amino acid glucogenic and ketogenic but the metabolism is not only just the formation of the products but also the deficiency leads to many kinds of diseases so it is very important thanks for kind patient listening thank you so much